wearing the dark blue trunks, weighing in at 136 pounds. He comes to us from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., with an outstanding professional record, 40 victories with 20 KOs, five defeats and one draw. He's ranked in the top 10, ladies and gentlemen. He's Daryl Terrible T. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red letters, weighing in at 138 pounds from Silmar, California. An outstanding record once again on this side, 36 and 1, 29 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one ranked lightweight in the world, Rafael Reyes. All right, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. Are there any questions? Any questions, Chief Seconds? All right, remember, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times, touch gloves, and now let's get to it. All right, all set to get it underway. This is scheduled for 10. In the white trunks, that's Rafael Ruelas. Daryl Tyson, all in blue. Referee is Victor... Kukulich, and it's scheduled for 10. Lightweights. Ruelos is tall, lean, has a solid punch, I think has literal, literally very little lateral movement out as a straight up and down top fighter. Yeah, that is, you mentioned it, that's the one thing people wonder. And they also wonder if his attack isn't a little one-dimensional. But Joe Goosen and he have worked on that. For instance, against Paez, and, and if I'm not mistaken, you did that fight, did yes. you not, Tom? Yes. The, the, uh, he had a very interesting strategy. He just kept throwing those left uppercuts and hooks against Paez and staying on the inside when it, for all the world, and, and you commented in your commentary, as I recall, it didn't seem like that was the right strategy, and yet he made it work perfectly, didn't he? And he started quickly, and he's trying to get off first here in this opening round. An advantage would be to come out in a hurry and really put a hurt or two on uh, Daryl Tyson, who in his career has never been down. Ruelas uh, is the number one contender and had the mandatory chance at the title waiting for him in 90 days when Oscar De La Hoya and uh, Narcisco Valenzuela fell out because of De La Hoya's injury Ruella stepped in to take this fight against Tyson many think competitively it's a better fight than would have been De La Hoya and Valenzuela I think As aside yeah. from all that excuse right. me he told me that he took it because listen he said I'm the number one in the world I can fight anybody. Why can't I just go ahead and prove it? And he's very confident about a victory here tonight. And he had no compunctions, nor did his manager, Ten Goose Boxing, uh, Danny and Joe Goosen, uh, from stepping in here to tangle with uh, Tyson. Though Tyson is a crafty veteran. He's a very good fighter. And I think a lot of that has to do with the business of boxing. It is in his best interest. He can put more dollar figures into a fight with Pi the winner of Piaz and Pendleton or with Oscar De La Hoya at some point if he steps up here and has a nice win against Daryl Tyson. So it's a calculated risk designed to get him more notoriety. And maybe, they're, and maybe they're feeling, Tom, excuse me, that Tyson is not a big puncher and won't knock him out. It certainly is a tough tune-up. But if you're looking for a tune-up, it is in the full sense of the word a, a better tune-up than anything you can find. Ruelas very busy in this opening round. And even though he has missed many punches, he has also landed many. And Tyson, I, I think, it really very much using this round as a round to figure out Ruelas. There's that left uppercut. It's going to be the same. He's going to need that same punch in this bout that he needs against Piaz against the shorter man. The punch he will land and the punch that will, will hurt Tyson will be that left uppercut, half uppercut, half hook. In that fight against Paez that he won in 10 rounds, he came across the ring. The bell had sounded. About eight seconds had gone by, and Paez had just gotten off his stool when Ruelas just dropped it right on the back of his lap. Look what's working for you now. Listen to me. Your jab is working beautiful, right? He's got to get over it. You keep that chin tucked in there, he's got to get by your fucking shoulder and your hand. Keep working that. What's landing? Right hand to the body. Okay? Keep looking for the left uppercut afterwards. He's going to start landing. 
You saw that right hand hurt him. Made him do a funky chicken, right? Pressure. Walk through this conversation. Well, another look at the action. There's that uppercut that I talked about, and Joe Goosen mentioned it belatedly. He said, that punch is going to start landing for you. Well, there it is. And that is, that punch is there for Rafael Ruelas. Because Tyson ducks down when he gets away from the right, and that's where you hit him with the left uppercut. Dave Gorman, and we'll see him in a bit. He's the number one man over in Tyson's corner. Tyson fought just about 10 days ago, went 12 rounds, I think, with or 10 with Bramble. Yeah, and uh, to a draw. Yeah, and uh, and the fact that he had a draw with, with Livingstone Bramble at this point, Livingstone has not had good outings in his recent fight, so that doesn't bode well for Darrell. One thing Tyson does have that I don't think Ruelas has, Caution by the referee to both fighters. Tyson has been in with some awfully good fighters. Oh. Terrence Ali, and he also um, went in um, Jimmy Paul when Paul was a lightweight champion, I believe, or at least certainly up there among yes. the best of the lightweights. Beat Lupe Suarez. He lost the championship bid to Jimmy Paul back in 86. I saw him beat Melvin Paul. He's been in against the very, very best. There is the left uppercut, just missing, and the right hand came behind it. Ruelas is really starting to pick up the, the, the beat here in terms of what can land against Tyson. And Daryl Tyson, I think Tom's going to have to hit Ruelas with something of note to keep him off in here in, in the next round or two. Now, if you mentioned Tyson's never been knocked out in his career, he is not. And uh, this is just the kind of big, tall, lanky fighter with, with power and leverage that uh, might well do it. Ruelos, of course, um, as we've uh, mentioned, and uh, not to belabor the point, is uh, taking a chance. He has a number one ranking in the world in the division. He has a title chance all set within 90 days. A busted up hand, a cut over the eye, uh, an injury, a loss. All of that could sidetrack this young fighter from out of the valley and um, north of that toward Santa Barbara, Arlita. But uh, as I said earlier, he said, listen, if I'm number one, I'll prove it to anybody and everybody, and there's no reason why I can't go out there and take care of Tyson. Now there is oh, a... Tyson hit him a good shot with the right. And let me tell you, Raphael deliberately backed himself against the rope. He wants Tyson to come to him so he can counterpunch because he was having a hard time getting to Tyson, but in the process took a right hand from Daryl. This is a ploy on the part of Grella. Let's see if it works. Tyson has knocked out 20 people while winning 40 fights. And again, the referee cautions uh, Tyson. In the fight with Paez, which by all odds, Al Bernstein was the biggest in the career of Rafael Ruelas. He got nailed after having dropped Paez. He got nailed in the fourth round, was hit a shot. And as uh, strange as it sounds, Paez spit his mouthpiece out. And the referee, Marty Denkin, because Paez was several paces away from Ruelas, who was against the rope and in obvious trouble, stopped the fight, put the mouthpiece back in after washing it off, and Ruelas regained his control. right hand more. There's a good jab that got to uh, Rafael, but we're going to see, I think, uh, uh, as, as Ruelas tries to counter him off throw. That is what Dave Gorman just told him, as a matter of fact. When he throws that little left uppercut, counter with the right, and in fact, that's probably where, where Dave Gorman saw it and said, yeah, that'll work more often. And it did, didn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll see if Tyson follows up on it. Daryl Tyson in blue, Rafael Ruelas, number one ranked lightweight in the world in white. He's the taller of the two men by four inches. Younger, of course, by 10 years. This fight is presenting the same dilemma for Ruelas that uh, Paez did. A shorter fighter who ducks down will not be hit with the right hand until later in the fight when he starts. See how many rights he's missing? Later he might land that punch, but now it's going to have to be jabs, rights to the body, and left hooks and left uppercuts to the head for Ruelas. He's got to shelve that straight right hand for a little while. That's what Joe Goosen told him, and I think that's appropriate advice. The only blemish on um, the career of Rafael Rueda. There's a right hand chopped to the side of the head. Nice combinations by Tyson. Quick hands. 
He may be 32, but he still has considerable skills, Al. He does. He's a very fine boxer still. Now, there was a big left hook to the body by Rellis, another weapon he should use more. And, of course, that's the punch that Dave Gorman wants Tyson to counter over. So it, there's a risk there, but... Because Daryl Tyson, you mentioned at 32, one thing, Tom, and I think you'll agree, he still has very quick hands for a 32-year-old. No question about it. And it's obvious that he's in condition and ready to go. In fact, I asked Dave Gorman two days ago, I said he fought 10 days ago. He said, listen, it was a draw. He came out of it in fine shape. He's in great shape, so there's no reason for him not to take this fight. Yeah, it's rare that these days that you see a boxer get in 10 days later. You know what Daryl Tyson's doing in this round? Using his jab effectively. I mean, th this is as good a jab as he's, he's shown in this box. And there's a little puffiness under the right eye of Ruelas. This fight will not be won by Ruelas with his right hand. And there's an example. Boy, right on cue. It's going to keep flying over the head of Daryl Tyson. His left is going to be much more important or the right to the body. And, and I'll tell you, right now, he's going to have to crank up those left hooks and left uppercuts. Good right hand by Tyson. There's the right to the body by Ruella. And of course, when he throws the left, now Tyson's going to be looking to counter. Daryl Tyson, a very, very smart boxer. Always has been. Indication that even when you're a shorter man, you can land that against a bigger man. That's Tyson in his corner with uh, Dave Gorman. Boy, Dave's been around boxing a uh, lifetime, hasn't a he? A very good man. Nice yeah. man. Started out with Donald Curry. He's had lots of good fighters. Gene yeah. Hatcher. Now, there's the hook. See, you know, I talked about it. And Joe Goosen in the corner really d uh, dwell dwelled on that with Ruelas. And sure enough, it's worked. He said, you're he's slipping away from that right hand. Throw that hook. And boy, right away, he came out doing it. G Raphael grew up. Since, it, since he was 12 years old, he's been being trained by Joe Goosen as an amateur and now a pro, and so they, their communication between each other, obviously excellent in between. Look at him. See? Look what those double left hooks opened up. It opened up a right hand for him. Excellent corner work by Joe Goosen to, to, to make that point. He's, he's turned things around by Ruelas listening to him and doing that. And he's got a brother, Gabe, who's a pretty good fighter uh -huh. in his own right. He had a big go with the Zuma Nelson down in Mexico City, didn't he? He is number one among uh, junior lightweights. And he did give the Zuma Nelson all he could handle, lost the decision. And uh, they, are, they are two young men who I always thought would be superstars in boxing, and they're very close to being that. Those hooks and those uppercuts are starting to, to make a difference. Good right by Tyson. And another one. That hurt him. We'll find out how good Ruelas' jaw is. Paez really gave it a test. He weathered that storm. Tyson uh, slipping as he closed uh, with Ruelas above us. Now, there's a price to be paid for all those left hands, and Tyson made him pay it. Tyson's so quick with his right that he, he countered over one of those lefts from uh, Ruelas. But it doesn't matter. Gay, uh, Raphael still has to keep throwing that punch. But I think he should take a step to his left a little bit more when he throws that punch. Well, lateral movement has not been one of his strong suits. No. Despite the fact that he's a very fine fighter, and obviously... Well, it's interesting. He has real good hand speed, but truthfully, he's not that quick on his feet. He's the number one ranked contender in the lightweight division. Has had one loss, that one to Mario Gutierrez, when he was knocked down in the second round and was on one knee looking at Joe Goosen while the referee counted to 10 faster than Goosen could, and he lost it by a knockout. Just lost track of the count, both of them did. He ended up uh, getting knocked out. That's the kind of work in the inside that they want from him. Garrett, those, see, that, those hooks to the body and the head by, by uh, Rollis are excellent. But see, this is why Tyson, who is so clever and so quick, will hang in there on the inside and throw good combinations himself. Every time that 
Tyson dips to his right. That left hook is there now from Willis. Round four, mark it in your books, is the round in which Rafael Willis figured out how to fight Daryl Tyson. We'll see if it carries through the rest of this fight. There's the bell. That's the end of the fourth round. We've had 14 exciting rounds for you so far tonight. Excellent. And there's a lot more to come. We've got Pendleton and Pie Mask Man, number 32, Mr. Magic Johnson. And there's there's an example of the misses that Gabe Gorman talked about. And also, that's what Gorman's talking about. When They don't want Tyson upright all the time, Tom, but he's leaning down so much in that round, getting hit with those hooks. They said, don't always do that. You can hit him with the right when you're standing up. And that's exactly what he did there. Right now, they've got some uh, ice on the ring. A little residue from the uh, between rounds work by the seconds. Tyson in blue, Ruelas in white, trimmed uh, with the American and Mexican flags. He and his brother, Gabe, were born in Mexico, but they live in the United States and have since they were, oh, youngsters, six, seven years of age. This has turned, oh, oh my! Right hand by wow. Tyson and another. Well, He's got Ruelas in the corner, going to have to fight his way out of this. We've, but Ruelas has come back from this kind of adversity before. And look at him throw those uppercuts. Boy, Tyson doing a great job of covering up, but also Ruelas counterpunching well. Well, this is what the fans came to wow. see. Rafael needs to get out of that corner, and Tyson won't let him get out. Rafael Ruelas taking some solid shots, and now he's got Tyson on the end of that left hand. You know what's ironic? Early in the bout, Ruelas wanted to counter punch off the ropes. This time he was forced to, and look how it's working for him. He's landed more punches than Tyson now. He has indeed, wow. and uh, he may have swung this around. It started out badly for him, and in the last 30 seconds, he's pretty much taken charge. Tyson, back at that left jab, again has Ruelas on the ropes. i got to tell you something. Tonight's one of those nights where we're not even halfway through. You plunk down your money books, you're getting your money's worth tonight. No question about it. Right above us, Ruelas against the ropes and Tyson keeping him there. You know, what makes Rafael Ruelas well suspect in some people's mind, but what makes him always an exciting fighter is this seems to happen in all his big fights, doesn't it, Tom? It does indeed. And it forces him to come back. He's, he's got more mental toughness than most fighters. And he shows it here. And against a guy in Daryl Tyson who just two fights ago fought for the lightweight title. So, he's so stiff. That right hand by Tyson looked better than it was. Ruelas had a glove up there to protect his chin. And he keeps popping away. But Tyson keeps the pressure on and keeps him against the rope. Tyson went 12 with Miguel Gonzalez for the WBC lightweight championship and lost in December of last year. We see, we're seeing why. Oh, what a round. This, this round five, one of the better rounds. Solid shots by Tyson. About four, about two of them really landed. Now, who wins this round? Even though Tyson has hurt Ruelas several times, Ruelas has landed so many punches. It's a tough one to judge. All right, there's the bell. That's the end of the exciting fifth that's scheduled for 10. We'll follow Rafael back to his corner and listen in. Keep a cow ready, Tom. I don't mind you laying on the ropes a little bit, but I want you to start turning, okay? Take a deep breath and relax. You under control? Tom, clean up the ice on your side. There isn't any on this side. We'll get it all going. No panic in that corner. No, indeed. Very calm, cool, and collected. Daryl Tyson landed this right hand right to the jaw of Ruelas over a left hook. So he's doing what Dave Gorman wants him to do, and it was good advice from Gorman to stay more, stay more erect. But then Ruelas, when he was against the rope, started landing those hooks, those uppercuts, and he started getting things turned to his favor. And right at the end, again against the ropes, Daryl Tyson was able to land a couple of shots. Some blocked, but some got in. 
Let me tell you, both of these men have listened to their corners very well, and both Dave Gorman and Joe Goosen are doing an excellent job as trainers. Excellent. All of which brings us to round six, scheduled for ten. Neither man has been down, and each has had his moment. Or moments. Tyson in blue, forcing the action, putting the pressure on Ruedas, throwing that right-left combination as he backs him into the corner. And now the left hand, the uppercut. Ruedas uh, in turn, scoring back, hopping away at Tyson, who's never been down. Remember? You, you think it's us, Tom? You think they put on these exciting fights just when we get together? <laughs> just to make sure that they welcome you back to Las Vegas for the lot of excitement. That's there. right. They want to make sure we have good fights to call. Now, there is the right hand from Ruelas. And why is that landing now? Because Tyson's a little slower in these middle rounds. He's standing a little straighter. And, and only a couple of weeks, 10 days ago, went 10 tough rounds with Livingstone Grammar. So is this too much for him at 32? Well, Ruelas has scored repeatedly here in this last 10 or 15 seconds. That left hand very busy as Tyson oh. head down is forcing the action inside, but Ruelas is making the pay. Yes, and you know what Ruelas is also doing is going to the body with that left hook. A very, very important uh, weapon for him, especially at this juncture in the fight. In case you've just joined us, and we certainly hope that's not the case, that you've been with us for a long time. Ruelas is, of course, the number one contender among lightweights. He is already inked in to fight either Pendleton and or Paez. But, of course, he must win this fight tonight to yeah. maintain his number one position. And, of course, was in trouble in the very last round. Although Oscar De La Hoya sounded like a man that thought they could get around that mandatory title defense and get the next shot. But uh, that I remains think that might have been uh, the fact that I don't think Oscar can make 130. He'd like to fight at 135. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the lightweight is where he, his future is. And he wants that. He, he was supposed to fight Piaz and Pendleton anyway, the winner of that. But right now, Rafael Rella is trying to make sure he's the one that has a shot against those, the winner of that fight. Well, that left hand, as you pointed out to our viewers, has certainly been an effective weapon for this young man. It, it has indeed. And, you know, against a fighter like this, it's important. Now, let me tell you something. The two guys in their dressing room watching this fight, Freddie Pendleton, who's more of a stand-up fighter with a big right hand, if Ruelas is going to beat him, it's going to be with the straight right. If it's Piaz, of course, he'll have to use that hook again. So the weapon here for him, that hook, works here, but against Freddie Pendleton, it would have to be different. Tyson just got nailed right flush in the face, kind of backed him up. He gives a Ruelas kind of a nod as if to say pretty good punch, and just moments before that, he nailed Ruelas with a couple of solid shots. Here's uh, Dave Gorman again. Quit thinking what the hell you're thinking. You... This kid can't win this fight. You can only lose it. You hear me? Come on, baby. Give me 110 percent. Give me 110 percent, baby. Give it to me, baby. This is your fight. You are, Step right you, up in there. Step right up in there, baby. How bad do you, you want? Got you. Every time you throw, you got you. Keep throwing it and looking, Come dipping on. up in there. If you go dip up in there, shoot the uppercut and let it go. Shoot the uppercut and dip round and let the left hook go. Quit coming so low. Well, the countering is important over that left hand for Daryl Tyson. He didn't do much of that in that last round, but he did do it there. You the left you over the left jam. hand. You need to let the you right hand with the body I don't know whether you think Tyson's got a pretty good punch, but it proves that um, Rayless has got a pretty good jaw, despite what they say about his whiskers, that he may be a little suspect there. He takes a pretty good punch out. Well, Daryl Tyson is not a huge puncher, but, he, but he, he is a decent puncher. And the thing about Rafael Rayless, as we point out, he, he seems to get stunned in all his fights, but he doesn't, he doesn't go down normally. And he doesn't, no, he doesn't stay doesn't. hurt. No. So... This is the seventh round. Interesting conversation between rounds. Gorman was saying, he can't win this fight, only you can lose it. And the other guys in the corner saying, give me 110%. I don't think there's any question about that. Each no. man is giving his very best. That's for sure. And you know, we heard the flashes of Joe Goosen say, there's the hook from Morales, saying you hurt Tyson with a left hook to the body in that last round. See, people say Ruelas is one-dimensional, and sometimes it looks that way, but I don't think so, because he adapts during the fight, and part of it is Joe Goosen, who tells him to adapt. Joe is one of the best at seeing trends in fights and telling his fighters to change. 
Well, there's a great rapport between the two men because Ruelos listens carefully to everything he tells them. They, of course, have been together since uh, Raphael was 12 years old, so there's a lot of trust there. And I'll tell you, I have to say on the other side, too, Dave Gorman has given uh, Daryl Tyson some, some golden nuggets as well, and he's he has put most of them into effect. It's been a very interesting tactical fight, as well as an exciting one. And both guys in round seven here, I think, are, are just kind of gathering themselves for the final onslaught. But I think Daryl Tyson's starting to get a little fatigued. And, and because of that, Rell is really going to the body, and that body attack is having an impact. And something else has happened. Daryl Tyson has become a little enamored with waiting to throw that counter right over the left. It means, and he's not throwing his jab enough. Which you'll recall was very effective a couple of rounds ago. This is the seventh round. It schedules for ten. And unlike the other six rounds, there is just a little lull in the activity here as each man is checking the tank to see just how much is left in there. This might be the first round since we started this show, including our previous fight with Castro and Kim, that we've had even a small lull. And this hasn't been that bad around either. Blood coming from the mouth of Tyson. Throws that right hand counter. There's the bell. That's the end of the seventh round. Three more to go. Eight, nine, and ten. Joe Goosen talks to Rafael Ruelas again. You cannot Coming up, Jorge Paez and Freddie Pendleton for the IBF lightweight title. That bout, very important. And this bout, very important for uh, Rafael Ruelas. If he wins, he continues to be the number one man in line for a title shot. Well, you heard Joe Goosen give what I think was very good advice to Rafael Ruelas. He doesn't want him to start fighting Tyson's fight, which is kind of what happened in that round. He wants smart pressure, which means don't leave your left hand laying out there for the right. Remember, he reminded him at the end of the round. I mean, no, very few cornermen are going to give advice that way in the middle of a fight the way Joe Goosen does. I have to tell you something. People who were very suspect of Joe Goosen when he became a trainer without a lot of boxing experience uh, with Michael Nunn and those people. But they can say whatever they want. I listened to hundreds of trainers in between rounds over the last 13 years. He is one of the better ones at giving advice during the course of a fight. This is round eight. Neither man has been down. Each has had his moment here. There's that hook right underneath. That one, and that one I think may have stunned Tyson a little bit. Left uppercut half, left uppercut hook. See, look what Relis is doing. He listened to what Goosen told him. And by putting on that pressure, he is making Tyson go back, making sure that the judges don't steal around from him, and still isn't getting hit with that right hand because his left is keeping Tyson busy. Right above us now. Down the center of the ring. Mouse under the eye on the right side of uh, Reyes, and uh, Tyson has had blood coming from his mouth. Lift very evident throughout most of the fight. Right hand, right flush on the chin thrown by Reyes. He backs Tyson in the corner. There is one hope for my Daryl Tyson at this point in this fight, and it's what he's banking on. He is waiting to throw that overhand right over a lazy jab or hook by Ruella, hoping it will catch him as that one did in round five and hurt him, and maybe this time he can get him out. That's what his whole game plan is right now. Tyson is in uh, the blue. Reynolds, the taller of the two men at 5'11". But as you can see, Tyson has not been able to get that right hand uncorked, even when, even when Reynolds does miss with the left. And that may be due, Tom, in large part to the fact that Tyson is simply just a little more tired than he was earlier. Well, it's round eight, scheduled for ten, and we've had few quiet moments in this one. It's 
Your observation, I think, uh, well taken. Now Tyson seems to be waiting to throw one big shot. Now it's interesting. Tyson's the guy that you know is behind on points. He's the one backing up. Why? Because Wellis made him back up. That's the end of eight rounds. Back in the corner with Tyson. We'll listen in. Come on, baby. Don't, don't get frustrated. You know what you got to do. Don't get frustrated. Let me see you live, man. Break the water. Stop the water, man. Six more minutes of hard work. Give me all you got. Give me all you got. You gotta be a man. All right, give him a drink. You need this, baby. At any time, if you connect with a combination, you're ready to go. You got to give it all you got. you're right here. Cut lip on Tyson of some concern to Dave Gorman. Halbert Morrison asking for six big minutes of all you've got. Tyson in blue. Rayless is in white. As they're out here in round number nine, right above us. Rayless trying to make that left hand very effective as a weapon. And he's doing quite well as they battle in close right above us here in the corner. And you get a good view from our camera of that work on the inside by Rafael Ruelas. And those were vicious uppercuts that he threw with good leverage. When he gets leverage on his left hook and his left uppercut, and there's an example. So he throws with their body. But he has to just do a flank to it. A lot of power. A couple of weeks ago, Al, we saw the junior lightweight WBA champion, Hinato Ruelas, Fernandez, throw a letter of the two. All but destroyed. Has a reach advantage. Hinato Perez. Has right more power, or so his record uh, indicates, though. Tyson has they held up well. Really get the full import of that shot to the liver. It can be as devastating as any any punch ever thrown or landed. It really can. There's almost nothing like getting hit with a perfect shot like that to the right to the liver, as you said, right to the body. And this young man, Ruelas, has that capability. If there's one punch in his arsenal that sometimes is underused, in my opinion, it would be the left hook. I mean, he really has a good left hook. And when you see a big, tall fighter that has a real good right hand, you think that the left hook's not an important part of their arsenal. People used to think that about Tommy Hearns. Yes. Left hook was the most important punch to Tommy Hearns, in my opinion. Reynolds backs Tyson up. I think Daryl Tyson just is just tired. It's that simple. I don't, I don't think there's any question about it. He fought a very good, there's that little counter right. That's about all he's got left right now. And now at least he, now he's trying to throw it, thinking I gotta do something to get make it happen here. Or at least to keep this guy off me. Back him up if I can. Daryl Tyson has had a career of near misses. He's been a, an outstanding lightweight but has just never been able to win the big championship match. Neither man has been down. We're in the ninth round and it's scheduled for 10. Tyson in blue. And you know, Daryl Tyson, one of the few non-heavyweights who has fought his entire career at one weight division. How many guys in the lower weight divisions can you say that about? Not oh. very many. Pretty good right hand thrown by Reynolds. Back Tyson up. Tyson's never been down, remember. That's the end of the ninth round. Finally is able to get the right hand home. Now, remember I said earlier that maybe in the later rounds that right hand would get there. Well, now it is because Tyson is standing straight up. He's a little more tired, and his hands are lower. Left hand to the body thrown by Reynolds as they start round 10. I would anticipate, Al, that whatever, whatever Tyson's got left, he's going to put it out of the table here in this round. Yes, and, and you know why? Because he is a good, tough veteran who wants to win. And boy, look at him. He threw a good right hand. Didn't, didn't he, he ever? Now, this is the round in which, if I'm Rafael Ruelas, I might use my height and my reach to keep the guy off. Although, because he doesn't have tremendous lateral movement, 
He's maybe safer in a way. Look at those hooks. Banging away with that left hand. He's not taking anything in the way of a backward step. Though Tyson is really going all out. Goosen in between rounds here said he's going to throw that right hand. Don't worry about it. Be aware of it. But keep that left out there and keep coming after him. Now that also is good corner work because he knows that's the one weapon that Tyson is going to try to land. Give Daryl Tyson a lot of credit for coming out here in his 10th round and really going after Wellis. Fighting only 10 days ago in a 10-rounder. Taking his fight on short notice. Taking a, kind of a pounding over the first nine rounds, but he still wants this. Oh, that was a good quick right hand after a left jab that just missed. Nice combination by Tyson. Crowd here at the pavilion at Caesars Palace has treated to 19 very super rounds so far, and there's a lot more to come. Pendleton and Paez will be next, and then the little hands of stone. Carbohol against Quang Sun Kim, the gold medalist of Korea. This has already been a great night of boxing. It certainly has. You know, uh, one of the things that maybe you could criticize about Daryl Tyson is I think if he had used his jab and the straight right behind it a little bit more in this bout, he might have landed a few more of those rights. Instead of waiting to counter off the left hand of uh, Willis. He kind of got that in his head about countering over the left and hasn't initiated his own attack with that right hand. We're into the closing minutes of the 10th round. Should Ruelas prevail on the judges' cards and Tyson is going all out trying to turn this around. He's got Ruelas right in the corner, in Tyson's corner. Should Rafael come out on top, why he'll be in against either Pendleton or Paez. You know, he and Paez at the forum, Al Bernstein, drew 8,000. They drew 10. They would draw 10 for a rematch. You, be you bet you they would. And I think a lot of people would like to see that uh, again. That was one of the more exciting fights I have seen in a long time. It really was. And both men gave us their all. Uh, the age-old, uh, well, I wasn't in shape and not ready to fight, uh, came out from Paez. But I don't know about that. Oh, what a great round. Yeah. What a great round indeed. They hammered each other at the end and at the bell. They congratulate each other. And I tell you, Goosen picks Raylis up. And they uh, congratulate each other. Dave Gorman comes over. Now Gorman picks up Tyson. He didn't do it as well, but uh, he's uh, he's older. Well, than Dave's a little older. So. <laughs> hey, that was a, you know, it was quick. What was great about that fight was the tenth round, in which Daryl Tyson didn't give up, and this guy fought toe to toe. Showed a lot of. The, they say the heart of a champion. It's a cliche, of course, but but uh, sometimes cliches are true. Well, the uh, judges' cards are tabulated. Michael Buffer's collecting them, and uh, we'll soon find out. We said that Daryl Tyson did not give up in that 10th round. He came out to go after Ruelas, and here is an example of it. That's a right hand that missed, but he was going after him in the corner. Good defensive work by Ruelas. And right at the end of the fight, they got into a very good exchange. Tyson finally got his right hand off, but just didn't have enough to get by Ruelas. Michael Buffer has the decision. Let's check in with Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, we go to the scorecards. Cindy Barton scores the belt in 98 to 92. Paul Smith and Dave Moretti both see it, 100 to 90. For the winner by unanimous decision, Rafael Ruelas. What a unanimous decision, as you heard. Rafael Ruelas runs his record to 37 and 1. Comes over to congratulate Daryl Tyson on a fine fight. It goes pretty much as expected, I think. Tyson still hasn't been knocked down. Ruelas continues as the number one contender in the lightweight division en route to a championship go in 90 days. And that'll send him against either. IBF lightweight champion Freddie Pendleton or should it turn out that way the new champion Jorge Paez and Al they'll decide that for us in a few moments I, I'd pay to see that one <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you That's did good I'm one. glad you're aboard and yeah. I hope our fight fans appreciate the expertise 
and the knowledge you bring to these telecasts. I'm amazed. I didn't know how a kid from Chicago who wanted to be a fighter himself could end up such an expert well, commentator. I'll tell you what, we have a lot of fun, you and I. And, and when you have great fights like this, and you know what, Tom, when you have great fights like this, that in which uh, in, in, in both cases, like here in this uh, fight, both men made strategic changes to try and take advantage of things and, uh, and did well. And there's Rafael Reles. He knows. He's a young man who's 22 years old, came from a, a humble beginning in Mexico and then in L.A. And uh, some of the fans...